this could be a big long conversation and it might be better towards the end but i'll give it to you and you can kind of see unless something you can answer easy <clears throat> Yes, absolutely, hands down, no question. Why? Well, shrouds of valves. Yeah, um, it can better utilize the valve area that it has more efficiently to move air in the engine. How does it do that? Well, a wedge cylinder head, where the where the valve is located, it's usually against the bore wall. And unless that intake valve is at least 180, and I shoot for 200, 210 off the bore wall, 210 thousandths. Yeah. It's shrouded, and it's shrouded bad. Once you hit about 200, the valve is, it, it's still shrouded, but it almost doesn't see it. Um, it's so much more easier to control. So with a canted valve, with a wedge, you're just moving that valve down the bore. With a canted valve, it's coming off the bore. It's canted, so it's moving away from the bore. So you're already starting at 200 and you're at 300 at max lift. It's gonna move, it's gonna utilize whatever area you give it at a much higher efficiency because it's it's unshrouded so much. That and the fact that when you can't, you make the center of the chamber deeper, your plug location gets better because when you make it when you make a chamber like you know, like this, and you have a plug there, and the piston comes up, you can compact it right around the plug. So the chamber dynamics are better. And also on the can valve stuff, when you go low profile, like a Cleveland head, you can have a smaller chamber surface area, faster burn rate. I mean, it just makes everything so much easier and so much better. And I I'm gonna put out a, a YouTube video, and we'll talk about my YouTube channel later. Sure. Uh, on, on valve location and why why do we go from a wedge to a candid valve to a semi-hemi to a hemi? What, why are we doing this? And the reason is, is a wedge, if you just say uh, 2200, 1600 valves or 2250. So a wedge is gonna peak out at about 7800. And, and I'm throwing these out here, okay? These are just for demonstration. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> so let's say a wedge will go 7,000, and then a, a slightly canted valve will go 75, 78. The Hemi will go 88. And somewhere in between there is perfect for, for a, a specific discipline of racing, specific engine combination at this engine speed. Because what happens is the wedge has no overlap flow. You can't move air through the engine. But when you can't valves, you form, a, you form a place where the air, a path where the air could come right out the intake and out the exhaust. And the Hemi is the epitome of that. Because with both valve opens, you can see right outside the exhaust. I mean, that's the most overlap flow you can get. So you have a wedge with no overlap flow. So what that does is it limits your over rev and your engine speed. So once the engine signs off of the intake track, it's gonna start nosing over. You need to carry that out another thousand RPM. You have to do that. So with wedges, they, they have less over it. Now, now let's cant the valves out, make the whole system more efficient. Now we've gained engine speed, we've made the whole system more efficient. So now let's over rotate. Let's, let's, let's rotate them where the engine doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? Because it has too much overlap flow. If you operate that engine in an RPM lower than that overlap flow is tuned to. So point in case, uh, Pro Stock put a 10,500 limit on RPM. And you notice the Mopars quit running. The, the, the Mopars, the Hemis, the semi-Hemis, right. Mercy E3s, everybody threw them in the trash. Why did they do that? The valves are over-rotated. Okay. As you rotate those valves, peak torque moves higher and higher and higher. Or your ability to produce peak torque higher and higher gets easier and easier. 
you can move the power band higher and higher with the more rotation you have with because of the overlap flow and a, a lot of other reasons. But if you over rotate and you try to operate the engine in a lower RPM range than that overlap flow is tuned to, you kill torque. Okay. It's like putting too big of too much duration in the engine. So now you have like with a Hemi, even a 426 Hemi super stock deal, the lobe separations are out at like 118, 119. Because it has so much overlap, you don't need any until you get to the higher RPMs, and then you need it. So now it makes your camshaft design a lot more complex. And uh, that's going to be about an hour-long video on different rotations and how they react. Well, we'll make sure we get people to understand and where your channel is. We'll put links for that. And, that's something uh, that no one, no one talks about. I mean, that's been one of those you know, super pro stock secrets for 25 years with how, how where, where we put those valves. And you notice the Mopars won't run, no, but, no, and the DRC E3s, because it killed too much torque. With 10,500, you got to make your peak torque way down there. They're not designed for that. So just because they flow a lot of air, they're the same size cross-sectionally. The throat's the same size as it and everything else is the head that's not rotated, but it's tuned to that particular combination to, to have a high VE all the way up and carry over rev. If you don't have over rev, you're, you're going to not drop down above peak torque. Uh, there was a 363 cubic inch motor we built freaking years ago for comp C altered and it set the record and held it for a while. Now that engine on the dyno made its peak torque at 8,500 and its peak horsepower at 10.1. Wow. On the racetrack, now this is a converter car. It never dropped below 96 and it was shifted to 11.2. Why did we do that? Well, because we have, we have so much overrev on that little motor because we got all the valve area in the world. We don't have to worry about it being under valve. We can pick a valve that valve sizes that perfectly fits okay. that RPM yeah. range. We've got a uh, rotated head. We got every the best of both worlds for that cubic inch motor. We can make it highly efficient at a really high engine speed. But you over rev at a thousand RPM, so you drop back down to ninety six hundred where you have two hundred more horsepower to accelerate the car. And if you don't have that over rev, you can't drop it back down to 96. It'll fall right back down to 85, 88, where you're, you have 150, 200 horsepower less. True. Wow. Here's a quick one. Now, this is, this is where we get into the over rev, holding that power. Hold that power as long as you can. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. And someone was asking this question. I figure you might know this. It's a quick, easy answer. Um, yeah, I've played around with them. I haven't done any, quote, development work on them, but yeah, I've played around with them. 